Hey guys, welcome to a new video in this new networks and deep learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about what the best deep learning framework currently is. And we're going to compare Keras versus PyTorch and talk, talk about like how Keras is now integrated with, uh, with TensorFlow and how, how we get some of the functionalities and also features from TensorFlow within Keras. And then we're going to compare Keras versus PyTorch and talk about some of the pros and cons of both deep learning frameworks. But first of all, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video and also like this video if you like the content and you want more in the future because it really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way and I just really appreciate your support. So the first slide here we're going to talk about like some of the different kind of deep learning frameworks we have. So the ones we're going to focus on and the most popular frame deep learning frameworks we, we currently have is the TensorFlow, Keras and PyTorch. And then we also have some other different kind of uh, deep learning frameworks as Sonnet, Kappa, MXNet chainer that has some other different kind of features and also some other different kind of pros and cons. But the mo most important most important ones and also the most used ones is the TensorFlow, Keras and PyTorch, which is what we're going to do a comparison on. So over here to the right, we can see like we have this graph here where we have like the population of Keras and TensorFlow and PyTorch. And we can see that we're, PyTorch is, is, is slowly um, getting up to the level of Keras and TensorFlow and this goes back to 2019. And it just keeps increasing like the popularity of the PyTorch just keeps increasing and is, is fairly close to the TensorFlow uh, deep learning framework. But we see that Keras is still a bit uh, above the other two frameworks because it had just has some simplicity that we're going to talk about and it just have a very high level API that is really good for beginners and also for prototyping and, and creating really fast deep learning uh, models. So this is why Keras is such a, um, such a popular deep, le deep learning framework, but we're going to talk a lot more about that and with some of the pros and also some of the cons of both Keras and PyTorch. So the first one here we're going to talk about is the TensorFlow integrated um, with, with Keras. So the la latest versions of TensorFlow are now closely integrated with Keras. Uh, before uh, they were the two separate, uh, they were two separate. So we both have Keras and we we'll both had like TensorFlow. And then TensorFlow was more like the low level where you had some other different kind of functionality and you were more down uh, to the hardware and where Keras is more like this high level um, API that you can do some function uh, function calls on that actually like then uses some code under the hood and it was really easy to implement some uh, easy models and also uh, just using the, the high level API. But now in the latest versions, we, we now get some of the features and functionalities uh, from TensorFlow when, when we're using Keras because it is now uh, closely integrated. So as I already said, like Keras is a high level simple uh, API that uses TensorFlow as a backend. So when we call some of the functions in Keras, then it actually like uses TensorFlow as the backend and doing all like the calculations and the creation of the modules and also the training process. So TensorFlow is created by the Google Brain team. So um, if you're using any Google product, uh, products or something like that, um, it could be good to use like the TensorFlow, uh, TensorFlow framework. But Keras is very uh, beginner friendly because it has this high level simple, uh, simple API and it's just easy to uh, create and model and create your own neural network and then uh, specify the number of and like and layers and neurons and stuff like that. So it's very beginner friendly and it should be used by beginners. And it also supports for distributed, uh, distributed training on both DPUs and TPUs, which a lot of the different kind of frameworks does, but it's just really important to mention because nowadays when we're having um, very long, uh, very large data sets and we have like very long training processes, then, it, then it's very good to have this uh, support for distri uh, distributed training on both the GPUs and, and TPUs, where the GPUs is the graphical uh, processing unit and the TPU is the tensor processing unit. So these are very good for doing ma matrix uh, operations and multiplication. So that's really good when we're dealing with uh, neural networks, which is actually just uh, tensors and matrices. So Keras and TensorFlow here is also very flexible when we're creating and when we're deploying our model. And we also get a feature here with a Keras where it, which is called also Keras and we can use that to automatically find uh, the top performing models for uh, our data and our application. So we can just use this also Keras here where we have our data and then we can give also Keras our data and then it will actually like find the model that has the best performing uh, that the best performance uh, for the data that you that you put a lot that you fit or like feed to the model um, and then uh, you can find the best model that is performing best when you with your data and your application that you yeah, that you're doing so in carries there's also some pre-trained models that are available so if you have some different kind of qualification and you just want to 
uh, use a pre-trained model like the VZZ or like some other different kind of uh, YOLO V4. Um, those all implemented and, and, and all of also available in the pre-trained models with Keras. And the TensorFlow API is both available for Python and C++, JavaScript, uh, Java and, and Go. So in this tutorial here, we're mainly focusing on using the TensorFlow API and the Keras API uh, for Python. So now we're going to talk about like PyTorch. So PyTorch is created by the Facebook AI research team where TensorFlow and Keras was created by Google. So similar to Keras, um, it is very similar to Keras in, in the way like we're structuring a sequential model and they also like kind of the training process, but it has a bit more complex API where we can do some more stuff um, under the hood and specify some other different kinds of things that we can in Keras. So PyTorch is actually like used in, in a lot of different kind of modern software products. And one of the examples is the Tesla Autopilot and the full self-driving um, that, they, that they're currently doing. Uh, so Tesla is using PyTorch to train and create their models and also like deploy their models. And PyTorch also uh, supports uh, this uh, distributed training on GPUs and CPUs as we already talked about with the Keras uh, deep learning uh, t um, framework. And it's also flexible when you're creating your own neural network for research because you have some different kind of uh, debugging um, functionality and some all, all other different kind of features that you don't have in Keras. And PyTorch has this large ecosystem of additional frameworks built on top of it. So you can actually like use other frameworks together with PyTorch, which makes it really good. And also why, why PyTorch is, is in some cases better than Keras because we have this ecosystem of additional frameworks like it could be um, it could be NumPy or Scikit or some other different kind of frameworks uh, where PyTorch is built on top of that and can then can use those functionalities to actually like do something with your neural networks uh, with PyTorch and additional frameworks. So in, in PyTorch we also have this also PyTorch which also automatically finds uh, the best performing models for, for the data that you pass to it and also so you find the model that, that, that fits best for your data and application. So also PyTorch is not really that good um, as the Keras, uh, also Keras, but it's, it's fairly good and it will also find you a pretty good model. Um, so it doesn't really matter like which uh, which um, which framework you're using if you just want to use this auto uh, auto PyTorch or auto Keras. So in PyTorch we also have these pre-trained models available as I already talked about in the Keras. So there's a lot of different kind of similarities uh, between PyTorch and Keras, but Keras is more like a, a, a high level API, which is really easy to use, where in PyTorch we get some other different kind of functionalities that we can use and also this large ecosystem. So there's both some pros and cons of both the frameworks um, when compared together. And part, the PyTorch API is available for Python, C++ and Java. So we're, now we're going to compare like the code wise, like how we can set up a, a sequential model and how we can train a model and compare like how we will do that in code in both Keras and PyTorch because that is really important uh, when we're going to choose like which deep learning framework uh, would we use. So the first one here is the way that we're going to create it in PyTorch. So when we're creating a neural network or like a sequential model of a neural network, it is very similar from Keras to PyTorch. So we have this module here, which is called NN here, and we can import this a sequential model here and then down here in the sequential model we can just specify uh, the layers and the, and the neurons that we want to specify inside of our sequential model and the same down here with the Keras sequential model where we, where we also just specify the, the layers and neurons in our in, in our uh, sequential model so these are very similar to each other when, when we're just going to create the architecture or like um, the sequential model of a neural network so some of the differences when we're, when, when we're talking about PyTorch and Keras, when we're, when we're talking about code, it is the training process of a neural network, uh, which is a bit, um, which is a bit, which is a bit uh, different. So when we're going to do a training process or like train a neural network in PyTorch, we actually like have to use this, uh, some kind of like for loop here where, where we run through all, um, like all the epochs that we want to train our model on. And then we have spe to specify some different kind of things that we don't have in, in Keras, where in Keras we can just like have this function here that just calls all these things here and does all these things. So here we have to like run through the different kind of data and we have to um, zero the parameter gradients before we're doing our actual like training. And then we're going to do this structure here or this feed forward and backward propagation and then optimize our neural network which is already integrated with Keras. So in, in the Keras, like under the hood, like the functions in Keras under the hood 
does all of these things here that we do in PyTorch. But in PyTorch, we have this functionality or like this feature here that we can go into the actual code and then do some modifications on it and in the way that we want to do it or we want to do some, some modifications for our application. So in this case here, we have to get some, some output here, uh, which is the net here of the inputs. And then we have a, a loss here, which has some criterions from the outputs and the labels. So we're going to calculate the loss with this function. And then we're going to, this is the actual like forward, like the feed forward process that we've already talked about in this tutorial as well. And then when we have fed all the data forward in a neural network, then we can do uh, the backward, uh, backward propagation and then actually like update our weights in our neural network. And then when we are done updating our, our weights, we can actually like do this optimization step where we optimize uh, the learning process and stuff like that. So we have these different kinds of functionalities that we have to specify when we're training a model with PyTorch. And then down here, we're just printing out the statistics for each epoch that we're training our neural network on. So if you're going to compare that with, with how we train a neural network in Keras, in Keras, we first of all, we have to compile a model where we have to specify the optimizer that we're going to use when we're training our neural network. And then we can also specify the metrics we want to see and the loss function that we want to use uh, when we're training a neural network. And that's pretty much it. And then the other ones here is just default parameters, which should be set to none. Um, if, if it doesn't like, if it's not really needed in your application. And then we, when we have compiled our model, we have to fit it, which is which is what we actually like uh, run our training process in. So first of all here, we have to specify the X, uh, X and, and Y values or like our data set in the first, uh, first uh, two parameters here. And then we can set a batch size here and number of epochs that we want to uh, to train our model for. And also if we want to do some validation split or like shuffle shuffle the data when we're, when we're training our um, training our model and we can also set a lot of other different kind of parameters here. So when we're training a neural network with Keras, we just, first of all, we have to compile a model with some parameters. And then we also have this fit function here where we just specify some parameters and the batch size, the number of, of, of epochs that we want to train a neural network on. And then we give it the, our data. And then all of these functions here does all of the things um, under the hood. And we just need to call these two functions here and it will train our neural network. So. It's a bit easier here with the high level API to actually like uh, train a neural network, like create a neural network, train a neural network, and it can actually like be done in, 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 in three to five lines of code um, with the Keras high level API here. That's just all, that, that does just does all of it in the background um, with, the ba with the TensorFlow as the backend. So now we're going to compare like the Keras versus PyTorch and when we should use one framework um, over the other. So, I'll prefer to use uh, Keras if I'm just going to do some uh, some fast prototyping of a neural network and we're going to create a really fast neural network that we just want to train uh, train on our data and see like how that performs. And then I will I will choose to, to use PyTorch if I'm doing like some kind of research or if I'm doing I'm if I'm operating with larger data sets and I want to create more complex models because we have to do other different kind of like debug uh, possibilities and other features and functionalities. Uh, with PyTorch that we can go in and specify in the actual code. So Keras is more for like the, the beginners and it can also be used for experienced uh, programmers and also like deep learning uh, programmers because it's just really easy to use. And if you have small data sets that you just want to do a, a prototype neural network on, then you should definitely go for, for Keras. But if you're um, but if you're doing on uh, if you're doing uh, training on a neural network that has a larger data set. Um, large data set or you're going to do some other different kind of uh, additional frameworks where we have this large ecosystem and you want to use that, then you should definitely go for PyTorch if you're more experienced and you know like what you're doing. And also if you're doing some research because you can create more uh, and more uh, complex models and you know like uh, more under the hood what you're doing and what the model actually does. So this is like the comparison of Keras and PyTorch and when you should use um, the one framework over the other. And to just sum, summarize all of the things here that we've talked about in this in this video here where we have done in comparison and, and talk about what is the best framework for deep learning. So the Keras and TensorFlow here and the PyTorch are overall the best and most popular frameworks to use for deep learning. So when, when you're going to choose like which framework you should, you should choose to, for your application, like you should definitely check out these uh, two like Keras and PyTorch deep learning uh, frameworks out first and see what fits best for your application. If you just want to to create a fast prototype neural network, uh, you should definitely go for Keras. Or if you want to create some more uh, complex neural networks and do some uh, debugging and stuff like that on larger data sets, then you can go for PyTorch. But 
it's really up to yourself because you can do a lot of uh, different kind of things and like similar things in both uh, deep learning uh, frameworks. So it really depends on you and your application and also like the level and the complexity uh, that you need. So Keras is good to start with if you're a beginner and PyTorch is good if you're more experienced and you're creating more complex model and, or like doing some research on larger data set uh, where you need these functionalities or additional uh, frameworks that is built on top, uh, that's PyTorch is built on top. Um, if you're doing research and on later on larger data set and stuff like that. So that's pretty much this for this video. We have now been over like a comparison of the Keras uh, TensorFlow and the PyTorch deep learning library. And we talked about some of the pros and the cons of both, uh, of both frameworks. And we also talked about when you should use one of the more frameworks or with the other. So thank you guys for watching this video and remember to hit the subscribe button and fill notification under the video uh, so you will get a notification when I upload a new video in this tutorial or in any other tutorial. So I really appreciate your support and it just really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way so I'm very thankful for that. If you're interested in what other tutorials I'm doing, I'm currently doing a computer vision tutorial in C++ with OMCV and also an, an artificial intelligence tutorial where we're doing some reinforcement learning where we have an agent that is operating and interacting with an environment and then uh, training from just interacting with the environment. So if you're interested in one of those tutorials, I'll link to one of them up here or else I'll just see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.